Hello, welcome to this video in which I'm going to be talking about Python virtual environments. Now, why would you want to use a Python virtual environment? Well, by default, uh, Python will install any packages uh, that you have into one specific place. Uh, so on my machine here, if I just run a pip list, this will show me all the packages that I've got installed on this box. Now, they all go in to the same place. So every different package here has got a different version. Now, if I'm just writing code for myself and I'm just learning Python, this isn't such a big problem. Once you start working on different projects and you get different dependencies, um, you might want to use a different version of a package um, for your specific project. Uh, so that's where Python virtual environments comes in. And there are two ways, or there's multiple ways to uh, to do virtual environments, but we're going to use um, a tool called virtualenv. Um, that's something that you need to install. Um, so if we just do uh, pip3 install virtualenv, uh, this will tell you that I've already got it installed. Now there is another cut down version of virtual end called VMV. Um, now VMV is already installed with Python 3, um, so you can use that as well. But this tutorial is covering virtual env. Um, so what I'm going to do is first of all create a folder to put all my virtual environments in. So I'm going to create this folder here, VMVs and then drop into that folder. And then within this folder, we're going to use virtual env and then just put the name of the virtual environment that you want to use. So let's call this vm1. Now what this will do is set up uh, a folder. So if we do an ls, we've now got a folder here called vm1. Now within that folder, um, there are a lot of scripts and different parts of code. Um, we've got a, a version of Python in there, and it's a virtual environment, an isolated environment, where you can install uh, your own uh, separate versions of any packages so you can exactly have the exact environment you need for your certain project. So let's go into this. Um, now, before we use it, we have to activate it because right now, if I type which Python, this tells me where my Python um, is running from. So it's running from user bin Python. Uh, if I do Python dash dash version, so there's the, the default one here is 2.7.17. Now, we're going to go into my virtual environment. So to get into that, to activate it, what you have to do is, so we're going to go source and the folder, which is vm1, and into the folder bin, and the script will run from activate. Oops, I don't... Um extra slash in there the source vm1 slash bin slash activate now you can see that my prompt changes so i've now got vm1 as my prompt so i'm now in the isolated virtual environment now to say uh, which python now this is now going to say home roger so this is my home directory roger vm so it's telling me that I'm actually running Python from within this virtual environment folder. Um, if I see what my default Python version is. So that one there is 369. And if I do a pip list now, you can see that I don't have any packages apart from the, the things that we needed to set up this virtual environment. So if I want to now install um a package so let's just install numpy 
this will install the specific version of NumPy into this virtual environment. So if I'm working on a specific project that needs, um, so let's just do pip list again. So if this project I was working on needed uh, 1.19 and in a year's time I was working on the project again, but NumPy had you know, upgraded, it was now on version two, but I still needed version 1.9, then I can go into this specific virtual environment and just use this version of this package to run the specific project. So one of the advantages of using these virtual environments is once you've got your list of packages installed at the specific versions, you're going to want to save that. Uh, so what we can do is a pip freeze and then we just do dash dash local and we're going to output this to a requirements.txt file. So what that's going to do is take a note of all the packages I've got installed and the specific versions. So if I now go into here, you can see I've got a requirements.txt file. So let's go into that file, just cat that one. And you can see it's now listing that NumPy version 1.19. So if I was to take this virtual environment, um, I could move it to another machine, I could send it to someone else, and I could tell them here's the requirements.txt file and they would then install the exact versions of each package that they'd need to run my project. So that's one great feature. Now to get out of a virtual environment you literally type deactivate. So I'm now back to my main prompt. Now you can see before I did pip list I had uh, just these installed. If I now do pip list again, we're back to the main environment and here's all my applications. And a virtual environment within Python is actually just a folder, so there is no limit on how many virtual environments you can have. Um, so if we want to delete this virtual environment, um, we can just do uh, vm1, so rm minus rf vm1, and you can see that virtual environment has gone. Um, so that, in essence, is the basics of a Python virtual environment. There are quite a few different ways of creating them. Uh, virtual env is one of the main ones. vm, as I said, was built into Python. Um, but have a go with it, play around with it, see what you can use. And once you start learning Python, you will be using virtual environments every day, I can guarantee you. Okay, thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, um, please do hit that subscribe button. Uh, my name is Roger Perkin. I'm actually a, a network engineer. I'm based in the UK um, and I use Python for network automation. Um, you can check out all material on this before. Um, I've got a link down in the description with my website. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.